Welcome to Chamber Chat. I'm John Terre, President and CEO of the Boulder Chamber. And here I am in an undisclosed location. All I'm gonna say is I'm not experiencing that snow that many of you are dealing with right now, but I am so glad to be with all of you on another opportunity to have a conversation with our business leaders and community leaders about issues that are important to businesses, our economy and our community in Boulder. And today we have a really exciting conversation. We're gonna have two great business leaders in our community, Lauren Jenkins, who is the founder of Mini Money Management. And we have Ann Cooper, who is a longtime realtor with Remax of Boulder. And we're gonna be talking about, first of all, just their own background working in our community, but as black owned businesses, what are some of the challenges that they've faced in our community? How have they personally overcome that? And what recommendations do they have to our community, to our businesses, to our community at large about how we can be more welcoming and supportive of our black owned and black led businesses. So I'm really excited to talk to these two great folks. Um, but first, just a couple of announcements from the Boulder Chamber. So I'm gonna read them off my little screen here. So apologize for look down. Um, but first we have our winter bike to work day and that's gonna be on February 11th from seven to 9 a.m. It's a great opportunity to learn about how you can commute more efficiently, even in the winter time. Maybe not when it's an absolute blizzard, but usually when it's most times pretty convenient to do that in Boulder, if you have the proper equipment and, and um, understand how to navigate. So join us for Boulder Bike to Work, Winter Bike to Work Day. We're gonna have a breakfast station at the Boulder Chamber again on February 11th from seven to nine. And to get you prepared for that occasion, we have a special Boulder Young Professionals Lunch, and that's going to be on February 7th from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we're going to have our great friends at Community Cycles there to help you understand, first of all, what that great organization does to make sure that we advocate for cycling in our community and that we provide bicycle access to some folks who can't otherwise afford uh, a convenient two-wheel cycle. Um, but second, they're gonna walk you through some basics, maintenance 101 for your bicycle. So that'll help you get ready for the winter bike to work day. And then third, we have our business women's leadership group, another always wonderful event. And that's on February 9 at the Boulder Chamber. We're gonna have Corinne Hancock, um, and she is a leadership coach and speaker. Um, and she's gonna be talking about leading with impact, making, moving from default to action. So that's on February 9th, that's our Boulder Women's Leadership Group and make sure to plan to attend. And then finally, but relevant to our conversation today, it's Black History Month and Boulder Chamber is going to be celebrating and, and honoring that occasion with all sorts of interesting information for our Boulder Chamber members in the community about black, biz, black owned and black led businesses. We're gonna have special attention to our equity amplification program members who are folks who are uh, leaders in the black owned and black led business community who are now members of the chamber and we wanna make sure to highlight them and their work in our community and how important they are um, in helping the Boulder Chamber be more welcoming and inclusive to all businesses which then leads to our conversation with my two friends, Lauren Jenkins and Ann Cooper. So I'm gonna quickly transition to a split screen so we can see my friends here. There we go. Welcome, Lauren, welcome, Ann. Um, hey. So, hey, guys. Um, so listen, I just wanna start by just asking both of you, if you could just give a little bit of background on the history of your business activity in our community. So, um, Anne, maybe we just start with you. Okay, hi everybody, I'm Ann Cooper and uh, I'm with Remax of Boulder and I've been selling real estate in Boulder since 1997. Mm. Um, so Boulder has, I love so much about Boulder. Boulder is the community as a whole has been really good to me. Um, my business has grown every year and um, I'm, I'm really, really fortunate. And I know that I know that a lot of challenges that a lot of small businesses have had 
in Boulder. I've not experienced those, but I'm definitely aware of it. And I know that there are things that have happened in my business that sometimes I think if I were white, would that have been different? Yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, but Boulder overall has been really good to me and uh, as a business. Uh, personally, I wish that there were more Black people here, um, but as a business, it's been good. I love it. Well, let's get to some of those challenges. But first, before we um, uh, do that, let me just uh, get Lauren to just maybe tell us about uh, Mini Money Management. And um, I just should note that uh, Lauren and his team were winners of our Spree Venture Challenge competition. And uh, it was just an exciting event for us and I hopefully for you, Lauren, too. So take it away. What Tell us a little bit about uh, Mini Money Management. Yeah, um, so actually we just rebranded to Mini Money in the last couple of weeks. Oh, okay. um, and so this is a company that I started with my mom. Um, so we actually, I grew up in Boulder County. So I moved here when I was six or seven um, and we've lived here ever since. I left for undergrad and then my master's for about six years and then came back in 2019 and ended up starting Mini Money with my mom then. Um, and so we actually got second in the East Free Challenge, which again, oh, we can yeah. talk about during the, uh, <laughs> we could talk about who I voted for, that's their yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> Um, and yeah, no, so I mean, like my, my growing up, so we grew up in Longmont and growing up in Longmont, there was always a little bit of beef between like Longmont and Boulder. Now, again, I say that a lot because of sports. Um, and like, that was where I think like my first introduction to Boulder came. And since then there's always been, I guess, a little bit of a chip on your shoulder, especially not growing up in the actual city of Boulder, but living in Boulder County. Yeah. Um, and yeah, obviously, as far as people go, it's not the most diverse place. I'm sure most of you guys have noticed that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I think obviously we're going to talk a lot about our relationships with Boulder and the, the business circle. So I'll, I'll stop there. Well, let, let me start with that then, Lauren, just uh, pick right up with you. So, you know, and both of you have mentioned um, they're just you know, the, the number of uh, Black individuals in our community and just, you know, thinking, well, that's uh, in and of itself is something that uh, you, you would like to see addressed. But maybe we just focus in on the business area and just maybe some of the challenges that you think may be unique to you, your business, or the Black-owned, Black-led businesses in our community um, due to uh, uh, sort of the racial uh, differences. Yeah, and to, to Anne's point, I think she kind of hit the nail on the head is that there are issues that you're going to run into being a small business, like starting a company, starting a small business is not going to be easy. The success rates aren't going to be super high. But the problem becomes when you're a black business owner, you don't know which part of your failures are because you're a black business owner and which part of your failures are because you're a business owner. Um, so to your credit and to your point, the East Bree Venture Challenge. So the way that that was set up was that essentially it was a popularity contest. And again, not to crash on the Boulder Chamber, but essentially oh, the wow. winner of the competition got 10,000 while the second and third place people got $1,000. Okay. Now, if you look at a small business, that can be revolutionary, especially if you're an early stage company. The way that it was decided on wasn't by a vote or a panel of judges. It was based on how many people voted for you in the audience. Yeah. Well, two of the people or two of the members of the East Pre Venture Challenge were CU students, mm -hmm. whereas I didn't. I went to Campbell. Shout out to Campbell. Um, where I went to school in North Carolina and didn't have as many connections as people did out here. Yeah. So now there's a piece of it is saying, OK, is this a popularity contest? Are we not getting votes because of our race? Like, is this set up against us? But again, like those are the thoughts that start to go through your head and you don't know what's just systematically or systemically set up against you or what's part of just being a business owner. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. such a great point. And, and I will tell you that I just really appreciate you raising that. And as we say at the Boulder Chamber, our D&I efforts, it's a journey. So we're always learning. So even just this conversation, just really helpful. Um, well, let me just turn it to Ann and so ask you, um, what might be the perceived or actual uh, challenges that you've experienced as a Black-owned business in, in, in Boulder? Well, I can tell, I identify with Lauren and, um, and you, as a Black business owner, you're constantly asking yourself that, you know, because I think that there's a, there's a um, disproportionate amount of scrutiny sometimes in when 
with black business leaders or black business owners that people expect more or sometimes they expect less, you know, and, and we're, <clears throat> we're always struggling with that. You know, it's like, <clears throat> I oftentimes like think if I were a white male or even a white woman, like some of the multi-million dollar listings, would I have those if I were a different gender, if I were a different color, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so, you know, I think, and I think I, some of those, I think I should have, cause I know the people, you know, I know them and it's like, do they think less of me because um, like that I'm not able to handle that business mm -hmm. because I'm black or is it just, they just decided to choose somewhere else. So Lawrence, you know, totally right. It's like, we oftentimes don't know yeah. why we're not getting what we, we know we deserve mm -hmm. to get. And is it that scrutiny that people place on us as business owners? Yeah. And and sometimes sometimes it may be legitimate and sometimes it's not. Yeah. You know? I I totally hear you. And, and to me that it creates a, a little bit of dissonance and, and uh maybe discomfort, which you know might be difficult to overcome when, when you're trying to uh perform at your top at your top level. Um well let me just ask you this then, Ann. So how have you personally um worked to overcome these challenges to be the success that you are? Well, I, you know what, at the end of the day, you just do you, you know, you just do you. I just have to be me and I have to do the best job that I, that I can do for every single client that I have. And I'm so pleased to say that probably 98% of my business is people who've either done business with me before or referred me to other people. So, you know, very small percentage of my business is from people that I don't know. And I'm also happy to say that once they are my clients, they always come back and they always refer yeah. people. So, you know, so at the end of the day, we just do us yeah. and we do the best job that we can do. And we hope that the business follows. Yeah. Well, I love you, so that doesn't surprise me. So uh, <laughs> awesome. Um, well, well, Lauren, let me just ask you, you yourself too. Um, you know, and you're an entrepreneur, so it's a it's an interesting dynamic in terms of all the ch great challenges that that startup businesses face. Um, but maybe just addressing these unique challenges, how have you worked to overcome them? Yeah, um, growing up, my parents and then a track coach that I had always said that you have to work twice as hard to get half as far. Um, and that's something that we're taught as kids, like that's something that my mom taught me growing up. So even though, you know, there may be an issue in business, like this isn't the only place <laughs> where I'm black, like <laughs> I'm black in the grocery store. I'm black when I'm black when I go shopping, I'm black when I play sports. So everything that I do in life, you have to do a little bit extra and business is just another place. Um, I definitely think as far as like the startup world, as far as like the entrepreneurship, like I think for me, it makes me come with a little bit more to the table just because I know how people respond. Um, again, I think a piece of that is being a younger entrepreneur, but also a piece of that is being a black entrepreneur. Like the way that people will initially talk to me or, or give me different ideas is coming from a place of I haven't thought this through or they know better than me. And so I've gotten into a habit. And I mean, this is, that's not only in Boulder, but I go to a lot of coffee meetings in Boulder. And a lot of times the first 15, 20 minutes, I'll just schedule out to listen to people tell me about what I need to do with my company. Mm -hmm. And you'll listen and you'll listen and you'll listen and you'll say, okay, I've tried this, I've tried this, but you just mentally make a checklist. Yeah. And then you spend the next 10 minutes of the call disproving all the reasons why they think you should do what you do. And then you tell them your actual business model. Yeah. And that's when you start to actually have a productive conversation. But that doesn't happen until about 30 minutes in. Yeah. And so... I mean, again, I'm not going to change that. <laughs> I'm not going to go into Boulder and make the people who made millions of dollars in tech and finance and entrepreneurship, I'm not going to change what they think of me. The only thing I can change is how I carry myself and what I bring to the table. Um, and so, um, unfortunately, I mean, again, we're a startup. We haven't had the most <laughs> success or, we, you know, we'd be in a different spot. But I think coming 
coming correct is the <laughs> is the term that we hear a lot but just come and making sure that your birds and your ducks are in a row because people are going to address you differently people are going to discredit you a little bit differently which again i think can be a positive because it makes you a whole lot stronger now obviously should have happened in the first place probably not but we're here i hear you exactly. you know it's that's exactly the scrutiny that i'm talking about that you had to spend a lot of the time in your presentation to build credibility, mm -hmm. you know, whereas probably a, another person would not have had to do that, not to that extent anyway. And to your point, my mom, every week she'll call me and say, make sure you lead with your degrees. And that was why she told me to get degrees like growing up is because it's going to add more credibility. Mm -hmm. And so her thing, and especially from the place where she comes from, is like you need to come with that credibility and people need to know why you're going to, why they should trust you. So, yeah. I hear it. You know, it's interesting. Um, you know, many of the things you mentioned are values that I think anybody should carry, you know, always be prepared. Um, but to have to be so attentive to it, acknowledging or, or sensing that you may face some sort of a bias or, or um, a, a sense of lack of, uh, uh, you know, perfection or whatever. Um, because of bias, that that's obviously makes it less um, not inappropriate and, and unfortunate. But that's that's how you guys have responded. But I, I guess um, you know it's Black History Month, and for me, this is an opportunity. For, yeah, amen. Um, it's, it's an opportunity for all of us, our community, to reflect on our uh, approach in the DE and I area. How do we? make this community more welcoming, not just to black owned businesses and black led businesses, but to all businesses. Um, and so wonder um, if there a message, and I'll start with Lauren, um, you know, that you would have for our community leaders, for all of our businesses um, to how do we make this a more supportive culture and environment for black owned black led businesses. <clears throat> so I focus a lot on kids. A lot of the work that we do is with students. Um, and that's where it starts. So like I left Colorado not knowing that Boulder was one of the best hubs for like tech and angel investors. Like Boulder is one of the best places in the world to get investment. And I grew up in this county and had no idea. Now that isn't just because I'm black, but that goes to all students. But now, if you want to look at like what can the community do is like if you want to see people of color in the business world, then prepare them for it, because everything that I've done, I've been winging it or it's been something that I've learned from mentors, my mom, my pops, from somebody else. But there's never been somebody in my life who said, you know what, Lauren, like you should be an entrepreneur. This is the route that you should take. Here are some resources for you to do. So I think like, I mean, in, in case of like, what do you want to help? If you want to help black businesses currently, give them money. But if you want to get an influx of like more black businesses and that sustainable growth, teach people of color how to start businesses, especially in Boulder County, because the way that you start a business in Boulder County is going to look different than if you start a business even in the mountains in Colorado. Like the way the we're not preparing the kids, especially in this area, to be successful business owners in this area. Yeah. And I mean, again, like entrepreneurship isn't the easiest thing to teach, but the fact that I didn't even hear about it for a very mm -hmm. long time means again that that is is i think a failure of the business community to get more people of the business community or kids into the business community so yeah. that's beautiful uh charge to boulder chamber even to be able to think about how do we reach into our school system to make sure that we're touching all the um the diversity of our students and make sure they understand the opportunities not just i guess as entrepreneurs but um for work and and uh, um, opportunities in our community so Lauren, thank you for that's a great charge. Um, let me ask Anne. Anne, what's uh, if you were to think just how do we make Boulder a more welcoming, inclusive, and supportive environment for Black-owned, Black-led businesses? What what would be your your recommendation? Well, before I say anything, I want to say that Lauren was right on with everything that he said. Um, <clears throat> I think that um, you know, for Boulder being the type of environment that it is. We should be teaching this in high school. Mm -hmm. We should be teaching this in, because we are known worldwide as the kind of uh, community that you've just described. And it's a shame that our own kids don't know. And this extends beyond black or anything else. It's for all kids, you know, we should be teaching kids how to build their credit, you know, so that when they, 
when they get out, but it's so important to have good credit. Yeah. You should be learning that in high school. Mm-hmm. You know, you should be, so anyway, good job, Lauren. I thought that was great. <laughs> uh, but uh, what was the question, John? I'm getting old and forgetting. Uh, we share that. Wow. Um, no, it's, 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 it's a, yeah, it's, it, it's, we're looking at Lauren going, what is it like to be young? Uh, um, <laughs> so the, um, the, the question, it, it's just a charge to the community. You know, how- yeah, well, I, oh, that's what it was. And yeah. it's like, seek out black businesses, you know, find if you have something that you need to have done, go, I wonder if there's a black business in Boulder that provides that. Yeah. And then actively, consciously seek them out mm-hmm. to, to give them the business that, you know, you're thinking of whatever it is that you're thinking of doing. Yeah. Yep. You know, if you're purchasing a car, is there a black dealership? Mm-hmm. If you're thinking of doing whatever, um, look for a black business owner that provides those services or whatever it is that you need. And do that, not just in Black History Month, not when just Black Lives Matter on the TV for mm-hmm. the last five months, make it Black History Year. Yeah. You know, Black people are trying to catch up after 450 years yep. of being behind, you know? And so we don't have generational wealth. Yep. You know, most black families, I think the statistics say that we have 10 cents to every dollar that a white family would have. Mm-hmm. Like when my mother died, I had to sell another house to bury her. Wow. You know, I had to like, we, we don't fight over money when somebody dies. We fight about who's going to help pay for the funeral, you know? So it's like, because we don't have that kind of generational wealth because we've not had the opportunities at the same level as white people, you know? And so it's just a fact. And I know that people get to, oh, we're so sick of hearing about how behind somebody is. It's true. It's real. It's, you know, it's, we're behind and we need to catch up. And so if we're gonna close that, we're gonna close that economic gap, we've gotta do something about it. And one of the ways that you can help as an ally, if you will, is to support black businesses. Yeah, I so love that message. Yeah, I, I will say that, um, you know, we talked a little bit about or I mentioned the equity amplification program, which mm-hmm. um, is a component of our outreach to the black owned black led business community to have them join and be a part of the Boulder Chamber to make the connections to, to, to help uh, access the resources and support from the Boulder Chamber. But in addition, what we have is a list now of all black owned businesses um, mm-hmm. thank in partnership with Equity Solutions run by Aaron Clark, a good friend of all of ours. That was a great um, thing. Yeah. yeah, and so I, I mention that because your point is, is right on and seeking out um, these black owned businesses when there's an opportunity for service that you're, you're looking for looking for. Um, we have that list on our website. In fact, we'll make sure to put it online here, but um, that's a, an important charge. And I, and I, the, the, the point you make for why that's so important um, is just, you know, I'd say uh, the root of why we need to have these conversations and why this kind of dialogue is so important. Um, and, well, and then for large businesses, look at your list of vendors. Yeah. Like, who are you using to provide services for your organization? Mm-hmm. And make sure that there is a number of minority businesses on that list that you're using to, to you know, complete your work. So, mm-hmm. so that we're just not left out. Yeah, I love it. All right, I'm, I'm going to do this because I, I could have this dialogue for quite some time. And I, and I do hope as part of our um, DEI efforts at the Boulder Chamber that we do continue this conversation that we at the Boulder Chamber and our membership learn from uh, even, I mentioned, Lauren mentioned uh, these free venture challenges, how we uh, make those decisions. These are great learnings for all of us as we journey toward being a more, as we say, welcoming and inclusive uh, community. Um, and, you know, in that, I just want to thank the two of you. Um, you're both just great articulate spokes folks uh persons 
spokespeople's <laughs> on, on this this subject, but you're also great business leaders. And um, so, Anne, um, you know, uh, you are a great realtor in our community and an outstanding uh, business uh, leader who sits on our board of directors, I should add. But um, Lauren, listen, you're taking on that entrepreneur um, journey of itself, and it's a challenge. Um, and I know that I'm rooting for you, and I'm very excited about uh, what you're bringing to the table. So um, look forward to, to work and continue to work with you guys. I thank you so much for this conversation. And uh, cheers to, as uh, Ann said, it's Black History Month, but we need to have Black history all the time. So um, cheers to that. And um, so I just thank you guys. I'm going to quickly go back to um, single screen here just so I can close out this uh, chamber chat and just say I thank you so much for joining us uh, on chamber chat. Uh, it is Black History Month, so be on uh, a, a pay attention to some of the uh, important programming that we're going to be offering and information about our equity amplification uh, partner members of the Boulder Chamber. Um, but also, I just want to note that. Uh, we're coming up on Valentine's Day. And what I will say is that we just love our members at the Boulder Chamber. We thank you so much for the support that you have given us throughout these challenging last two years now, I would say. Um, you're so important to helping us support our business community to lift our economy and to make sure that we keep this community strong. So thank you so much for being on this edition of Chamber Chat. And we'll see you next time on. Chamber can.